Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. My name is Jason. Thanks for checking out the channel today. Super excited to show you guys this brand new fridge from Iceco and their battery pack. Now this is the JP Pro series. They offer it in two different sizes. This is the larger 50 liter version. They have a slightly shorter 40 liter version if you're not looking for as much capacity. Now this is an upgraded version over their standard JP series. And you'd wanna go with the JP series if you have a vehicle that just has a limited capacity in the back. So if you have a Jeep or a small crossover, these are more narrow and a little bit taller, so you actually save on space, so you can fit this in the back of a smaller crossover or SUV versus other larger models from Iceco. Now, Iceco is known for their reliability and efficiency. They have C-Cop compressors, a five-year warranty on the, the compressor inside, and a one-year warranty on all the parts. Now, what's really cool about this is this is launching on Indiegogo, and you can save $200 on the MSRP. You can pick this one up, the larger one, for $4.99 or the JP40 for $4.49. So if you're in the market for a new fridge with a ton of features, you're going to be interested in the JP Pro Series. Now, one thing that I absolutely love over this model versus the others is the standard JP Series had a divider down the middle that actually had two different temperature zones in each area, and you only had one set point on the fridge itself. Now what's awesome about this is they have removed the divider so it's just one open area so you get much better temperature control inside the fridge. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the outside features on this and then we'll jump inside and then we'll do extensive power consumption testing on both the fridge and the new battery pack to see how long it will run. Now taking a second to look at the outside features of the fridge first, doesn't it look awesome? I love this brushed metal section here and it's actually dual purpose because if you take the portable battery, it's actually magnetic and you can stick it anywhere on the metal section of the fridge. Just make sure it's plugged in there. And so that goes all the way around. So it's nice to be able to have the battery stick right there. Now, when these get filled up with a ton of food and drinks, they get pretty heavy and they're hard to carry with one person. So having integrated wheels and handles is very nice. So the great thing about these wheels is they don't take up any additional space. They're very slim. I've seen some other fridges that I've tested where the wheels are ginormous and they're very wide so it actually takes up a lot more room to have the wheels installed, and in this fridge, it's not the case. Now, there are actually two power inputs on this fridge. You have one on the front that's a DC power input, and because this hit the milestone on the Indiegogo already, you do have the DC input, the AC input, and the USB ports that will be put on the back of the fridge. Now, taking a closer look at the lid, it has two individual handles, and it opens either way. You can open it from one side, or you can open it from the other, or if you pull both handles, you can actually take the entire lid off and just access the food inside and then put the lid back down. Now what's nice is if you leave the lid slightly open, there is an alarm that goes off and the screen tells you that you left the lid off to warn you that it's not going to be cooling very efficiently. I wanna take a second to talk about the upgraded display on this fridge. Now right here you have a large indicator of the temperature inside, and then you have a voltmeter to see the voltage of your battery, which is really cool. And then you have some other things here. It'll tell you if it's in Fahrenheit or Celsius. It'll tell you if it's in eco mode or max mode or if the battery protection settings are set to low, medium, or high. Now, if you wanna learn about that, go ahead and read the owner's manual. You adjust the temperature by pressing these two buttons. And if there's a red light on, you can see that the UV light inside is, is actually turned on, which is really cool to have that to kill off bacteria. If you wanna turn that off, you can press and hold both these buttons at the same time. Just so you know, the UV light is on this side and the LED light to see at night is on this side. And you have basically two areas for storage. You have the area on top of the compressor that's a little bit smaller, and then you have this larger, deeper area. Now it's nice to have this included basket. If you wanna move the fridge around by yourself, you can actually take the food out. So say this is filled with food, you wanna lighten up the, the refrigerator, you just basically remove the basket and then the fridge gets much lighter. Now, looking down at the bottom, you can see there is a drain plug down here, which is really nice. If you happen to have a spill, you can just let it drain out and then wipe it up with a damp cloth. Now, on the inside of this fridge, it is lined in metal, and that comes in direct contact with the cooling element, so it actually cools down very quickly. I noticed getting down to temperature in about 20 minutes. The fridge is about 22 inches wide. It's about nine and a quarter inches deep. The main compartment is about 16 and three quarter inches tall. The smaller side is about eight and a half inches tall. And the shelf of the compressor is about eight and a quarter inches wide. Now these walls are super thick. They're about two inches thick. So I'm pretty excited to show you guys the efficiency numbers on this fridge. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about fridge power consumption. Now this has a CCOP BD35F compressor in it. When it's on standby, it pulls around one watt of power. When it's on eco mode, it pulls 48 watts of power. And when it's on max mode, it pulls 68 watts of power. Now the compressor doesn't run all the time. It cycles on and off. So basically depending on the ambient temperature and the set point, you'll get a average power consumption. And because the power consumption varies at different temperatures, I like to do two individual tests. So I took all this information and threw it into a graph for you. Let's start with the 70 degree ambient test first. So my basement's around 70 degrees and this ran for 24 hours. And during that time, it pulled around 250 watt hours. If I divide that out over 24 hours, that's around 10.4 watts on average. Now the next test, I had to get the temperature up to 85 degrees. So I actually take the fridge, put it in the closet with a heater set to 85 degrees ambient, and then I let it run for 24 hours. So during the 85 degree ambient test, it pulled a total of 400 and 40 watt hours and if we divide that out over 24 hours that's around 18.2 watts on average now both these power consumption numbers are really good i'm very happy with these results but what if you put this in a very hot car in direct sunlight where it was above maybe 105 degrees ambient well the compressor is probably going to run consistently at that point never turn off so if you have it set to eco mode and it pulls 48 watts then you times that by 24 and you'll get an average power consumption of 1152 watt hours over a 24 hour period. Let's go ahead and take a second to talk about this portable battery. Now this is a lithium battery and uh, it basically is rated at 250 watt hours. Now I wanted to figure out how much power I could get from this. So I plugged in my battery load tester, charged this up to 100% and then took it all the way down to 0%. And I actually pulled 230 watt hours or around 92% of the rated capacity. Now let's see how long this will run this fridge. Now that we've done the power consumption testing on this fridge, 70 degrees ambient, this pulls around 10 watts on average. And then 85 degree ambient, this pulls around 18 watts. So if we took the 230 watt hours that we got out of this, and divided that into 18, that would give us 12 hours of runtime on this fridge at 85 degree ambient using this. Now what's really cool is there are two ways to charge this up. You have a 12 volt socket uh, charger or you have a AC power brick and both those charge around 75 to 100 watts. So it actually charges up pretty dang quick. So if you have this connected to your fridge like this, and then you had your 12 volt socket plugged to charge this battery and then the fridge running off this, you could basically charge it up while you're driving and then whenever you turn off your car, you'd have around eight hours of runtime or longer depending on ambient temperature. Now, if you're looking for a little bit of added protection and insulation for your fridge, there is a insulated cover available for both the 40 and the 50. It has this zipper section that expands. So it's expanded on this one because this is the bigger model. Now, looking inside, you can see there's like this reflective material and this is fairly thick. This is thicker than the other insulated covers that I've seen for Iceco. So it seems that they have upgraded this. Now there's a window to see the display. The handles are still outside and available. You can access both the DC ports and there's even a pouch on each side to hold all the wires and everything. So very cool to add a little bit of extra protection and insulation. Now I haven't done any power consumption testing with this cover, but maybe I'll do that in the future if enough people want me to check out the added value of having this insulated cover. Okay, so at the end of the video, I thought it'd be great to show you a side-by-side -side comparison between both of these fridges. Now, this is the standard JP series, and this is the JP Pro that we've been you know, talking about in the video. Now, this is the 30 liter version, and this is the 50, and this is available in 40 and 50, so it just gets taller with each increment, just as this one gets smaller with each increment. So, you do have a better feature set on this. Um, you have the open chest style compartment. There's no divider, so you have all one temperature. And on the JP30, you have that divider, so you have two different temperature zones, but you can only change the temperature in the larger area. The shelf area is about 10 to 15 degrees warmer based on the conditions it's in. Now, the other thing I noticed when I was testing both of these fridges is this one stays a lot closer towards the set point. This one's a lot more quiet. And this one here kind of strays a little bit away. I've seen up to 10 degrees away from the set point on this fridge. So if you're looking for an excellent deal, remember this is available for $4.99 on the Indiegogo, which is cheaper than the JP50 on Iceco's website. So if you're looking for a new fridge, you may be interested in picking up this one. Uh, very cool that this has all the features. Now, if you're interested in any Iceco fridge, I do have a full comparison video where I compare eight different fridges from Iceco, basically one from every line. I talk about their features, their price, and their performance. 
and it's just a really fun video to break down all the different fridges. So if you are interested, uh, check out those videos. If you have any questions or comments about either of these fridges, throw a comment down below. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.